name is Gabriella Mirza, and I am a County Extension faculty with Utah State University Extension. And welcome to my backyard. We're in the Salt Lake City area and we are in full bloom. So I wanted to show you a couple of uh, gardening techniques and things that you could do to make your common gardening tasks a little bit easier. The first technique I'm gonna show you is called the squat. This is really useful for if you are lifting something up or putting something down. So for example, I have this bucket. Now for most people, depending on if it's a bucket or a bag or something else, they're gonna hinge down and they're just going to lift it up. And as you can see, I really just hinged over and used my lower back to be able to pick this up. With a squat, you're in not engaging your back and instead you're using your larger leg muscles to do the work for you. So in a squat, you're going to stand with your feet about shoulder width apart. If the item is larger or heavier, you might want to stand wider just to have better balance. But for this one, I'm just going to show with the bucket. So stand with your feet about a hip width apart or shoulder width apart. You're going to put weight in your heels. You're going to stick your butt out a little bit and pretend like there's a chair behind you. And as you're putting weight in your heels, you're going to go down as far as you need to grab the item and then push through your heels to lift back up okay and then to bring it back down you do exactly the same thing so you put weight in your heels you go down and then you push through your heels to go back up to standing position this next technique is called the pivot technique this is really helpful for if you are moving things um, from one side to the other so rather than twisting from side to side, you're going to move your entire body. So for example, with this bucket again, what happens is if you're lifting something up, you might just put it back down or again with a shovel or anything like that. So with a pivot technique, instead of doing that, I'm gonna show you, let's have this bucket up here. And now if I wanna move it over to my left side, my left foot is going to pivot to 90 degrees and then I'm going to move my entire body and now I'm over where I want to be. Now let me get back to the beginning. So now I'm going to take my right foot, turn it 90 degrees and then move my entire body. If I need to move over to my right side, I'm going to take my right foot, move it over 90 degrees and then move my entire body. And now I can set it down or I can put it on a table or wherever you need to move that item. This last technique is called the back and forth weight transfer. This is one that would be really useful if you're using a rake. Um, and so when we use a rake, now I'm demonstrating on the other side just because obviously I'm on, I'm on a deck, but um, when you use a rake, sometimes we kind of just hunch over and we use that rake while we're on one side. So we're, we're twisting our back and we're hunched over. Um, and so this puts a lot of strain on our back muscles and also our ankles and our knees. So with a back and forth weight transfer, instead of using your upper body, you are keeping your back straight while you're engaging your legs to do most of the work. In a back and forth weight transfer, you essentially have one foot that's pointing forward in the direction you're going to be raking. The back foot is going to be wide enough to where you have good balance and where you feel steady. And it's going to be um, pointing at 90 degrees. So you have this perpendicular, kind of this perpendicular angle. You're gonna grab your shovel. And as you go down, you're going to rake this way by moving your legs back and forth rather than using your arms to do most of the work. 